Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let me start by thanking the organizers for organizing a great conference. It's a real pleasure to be here at the 25th anniversary. Uh, this is a joint paper with uh, Steve Grenadier from Stanford and with Nadia Malenka from Boston College. Uh, broadly speaking, uh, in this paper, uh, we study uh, communication and allocation of control rights in firms uh, for decisions uh, that concern the optimal time of doing something. So let me give you some motivation. So consider uh, a standard uh, problem uh, inside a firm. Uh, you have an uninformed uh, boss, a principal. You have an informed uh, subordinate, an agent with uh, in useful information for what decisions to undertake. Uh, there are incomplete contracts, so they cannot contract uh, specifically on the, on the decision and the resulting cash flows. And there are two important questions. So first, uh, does information uh, flow efficiently from the lower level managers to the uh, upper level managers? And second, how to allocate, uh, how to allocate control rights, particularly what decisions to, uh, to delegate? So these are very important questions and there has been a very large literature on this question, uh, including by, uh, by people in this room. Uh, to my knowledge, with very rare exceptions, uh, all, this, uh, all the literature uh, studies decisions, uh, static decisions that must be done today, uh, such as project scale. Uh, so we know that we do the project today, uh, but the decision is what size of the project to take, and this is the decision over which the agent has some useful information. So the starting point is, of course, uh, many decisions that firms take are uh, about the optimal time of doing something, and the examples are very easy to come up with. Uh, bringing a new generation of the iPhone to the market, shutting down a poorly performing plant, uh, drilling an oil well. And in fact, I would argue that uh, almost any decision that you can come up with can be delayed to some extent. So by uh, studying decisions that are purely option exercise problems, uh, hopefully we can say something uh, more generally about, uh, about uh, uh, firm decision making. So what we do in this paper, uh, we develop a theory of how organizations make stopping time decisions uh, in the presence of incomplete contracts. So we study in inefficiencies in communication and resulting uh, decisions, and we study allocation of control rights. And the main message that we develop in this paper is that stopping time decisions, the decisions over the time of doing something, they have pretty different economics from static decisions. They have different implications for uh, inefficiencies in communication. They have different implications for location of control rights. Uh, in particular, uh, sort of an important result will be that there is a symmetry between, betwo between the two cases. The delay bias case, where the agent uh, wants to do something later than then this should be done, then the principal wants to do. So think about a decision like shutting down a poorly performing plant, and you have a div division manager with useful information, but all else equal, she doesn't want uh, the boss to shut down the plant because of some personal cost of relocation. And the early exercise bias case on the other hand, so decisions like uh, when to bring a new generation of the product where the manager uh, has career concerns and wants uh, his product to be implemented earlier than, than the firm. Uh, so I will talk about uh, why this asymmetry arises in more, in more detail, uh, but the reason, sort of the big reason that drives this asymmetry is, is the built-in uh, nature of time, so the irreversibility of time. So the idea here is that if uh, uh, you are my boss and I'm your agent and I tell you some information, you can act on this information today or you can delay, but you cannot go back in time and revise your, uh, your, your decisions in the past. So it turns out that this asymmetry is, 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 is very important for decisions that concern uh, uh, timing. So in particular, what we show is that in the delay bias case, so decisions like plan closures, uh, you often have full communication of information uh, but uh, this communication, it happens too late. So the principal learns the information of the agent, but uh, it happens too late and the decision is procrastinated. 
So this is very different from, uh, from what we know about uh, decisions like project scale from Crawford and Sobel, where the friction is that uh, in the presence of the conflict of interest, the agent cannot credibly communicate information uh, to the principal. So the principal doesn't learn information. And in this case, we show that you never want to delegate uh, decisions. Uh, so you, you, you can never do better, at least the co in the context of the model, uh, with delegating the decision uh, than with keeping the right uh, to decide to yourself uh, and getting advice from the agent. So this is also very different from what we know about, uh, about static decisions. In contrast, in the early exercise bias case, so the implications that we get are closer to, uh, to what we know about the decisions like project scale. So you get noisy communication by correct timing, uh, at least with some equilibrium refinement. And uh, in this case, delegation can help. So decisions like uh, product launches, uh, they uh, sometimes should be delegated and you can do better by this. So this is the rough uh, outline of the results. Uh, so let me uh, get into the, into the details of the model. So two players, principal agent, uh, a, a perpetual American call option. So I will use the call option example. Uh, everything works with the put option the same. Uh, trust me on this. Uh, so for concreteness, uh, let's use the drilling oil uh, example. So the principal obtains the pay of theta x minus i. x is the public state process uh, that follows geometric Brownian motion, so things like market size or the oil price. Uh, and theta is the agent's private information. Uh, so it, the agent learns it at the initial date, the principal doesn't know it. And uh, we assume that it's uniform between theta low bar and one. And for most of the paper, we will also focus on the case where theta low bar equals zero, because in this case, the problem becomes very stationary and, uh, and very tractable. So upon exercise, uh, the principal uh, gets theta x minus i. The agent gets the same thing, but, uh, but with the bias. Uh, you can, this is just a normalization. You can think that they split the project payoff with some proportions, and you can rescale everything that goes the same. So if, you, if, the, if b is positive, this is a bias for early exercise, so all else equal for the same information. The agent wants to exercise the option earlier than the principal, and negative B means bias for later exercise. So in principle, uh, you can uh, have the same payoff but different discount rates. If you like this setup, economically it ma maps into the same thing. And B is common knowledge. Uh, so we assume that there are incomplete contracts. So for now, Let's assume that nothing is contractible. So the only thing that they can do is that they communicate, so cheap talk. So the principal relies on informal communication with the agent. And later we will uh, look at the allocation of control rights, so where the control rights are contractible. So now they are not, so the heuristic timing is as follows. So we wake up today, we see what the oil price today is. So the agent sends some message M to the principal. The principal looks at this message, uh, looks at the oil price, at the price history of the game, decides whether to drill or not. If the principal drills, the game is over and uh, they obtain these payoffs. If the, if, if, if the principal doesn't drill, uh, tomorrow morning we wake up, get, get to see another oil price, and the game repeats. Uh, so we, we have a lemma that uh, I'm going to skip in this presentation, but in the paper it's an important lemma that without loss of generality, uh, it's enough to focus on binary messages, zero and one. So think about recommending to drill and recommending to wait. <coughs> uh, so con first consider the case of late exercise. So negative B, the agent wants to do later than the principal. And the stationary case where theta low bar is, is zero. So let me convince you that the following uh, strategy profile is an equilibrium if B is not, uh, is not very low. So if I'm an agent, I'm, I'm type, I have type theta, suppose I play the following strategy. I wait until the oil price hits my most preferred threshold, which is X uh, star A of theta, and then I recommend you to drill. Uh, so what is your best response to this strategy? Uh, when I recommend you to drill, 
you learn that it's already too late because, uh, because I have negative B I want to delay. So you are tempted to go back in time to revise your past decisions. You cannot do it because time is irreversible, so you drill immediately. Now, if I recommend you not to drill, what happens before that? You have a trade-off, and the trade-off is, is between waiting for information uh, and delay. Because if you wait, you know that you will get the precise information, you will learn theta. But it will happen uh, too late, and, you, and the decision will be procrastinated. So in the stationary case, this trade-off is the same. It doesn't change over time. And if B is not that low, so if the conflict of interest is not that big, uh, you will wait. So this is an equilibrium, and it uh, Pareto dominates all other stationary equilibria that exist here. So all types of the agent and the principle are better off in this equilibrium than in the others. And other equilibria look like the only equilibria that we have in the positive B case that I'm going to talk about in the next. So this is the illustration. So if, you are, if we have type theta uh, point 0.2, uh, then the agent will recommend to drill at this point in time. Uh, so as the oil price process goes up, the green line is just the running maximum. The agent recommends you to wait, wait, wait. So you wait because you care about information. Here the, recommend, the agent recommends you to drill. You, know, you learn that it's already too late. You attempted to go back here, but you cannot do it because time is reversible, and so you drill immediately. So what happens is that you have full communication, but it happens with delay. And so the decision is informative, but it gets procrastinated. And using the uh, language of Agion and Tyrol, uh, the principal has formal full authority, but the agent has unlimited real authority in equilibrium. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the illustration. Let me skip it. And let me talk about the uh, non-stationary case. So suppose now that theta low bar is bounded away from zero. So in this case, uh, the equilibrium I described, it transforms into, into the following equilibrium. Uh, so the principle waits uh, for the agent's recommendation. But as time goes by and the agent recommends you not to drill, you learn that theta is not that high and the private information of the agent as a consequence goes down. In the stationary case, the problem repeats the same because everything is scalable. But in, in the non-stationary case, you know that theta cannot be really low. And so over time, the private information of the agent goes down. And at some point, uh, as the principal, you decide that, OK, I'm not going to wait anymore. Stop procrastinating. I'm going to, to drill regardless of what the agent says. And this is this point. Uh, so this is the point where the value of information is exactly equal to the uh, to the loss due to, due to procrastination, due to delay. Um, so this is the, the illustration. So this is how beliefs evolve over time. So we know that theta can be lower than 0.15 in this case. And as time goes by and the agent recommends you not to drill, you know that uh, the amount of oil uh, is below a certain cutoff. And since you know that it cannot be really low, the private information of the agent goes down, and at some point you, 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 you drill regardless of, of what the agent says. Now, consider the problem of allocation of control rights in this case. So suppose that at the initial date, the principal can commit to delegate the decision to drill to the agent. The question is, uh, is it a good idea or is it uh, not a good idea? And the main result here is that in the negative B case, so when the agent has the desire to, to do something later than the principle. Delegation never helps. Uh, so centralization is always weakly superior to delegation. So the idea here is as following. Suppose that you, uh, you delegate the decision. You know that the agent will exercise at his most preferred threshold, x a star of theta. If you don't delegate, you play this uh, cheap talk game that I just described. In the, we know that in the, non -sta in the stationary case, the solution to this cheap talk game is exactly the same that you get with delegation. In the, uh, the non-stationary case, the solution to this cheap talk game is, is like conditional delegation. You wait until the agent's recommendation, which uh, he gives at his most preferred time, before it is too late, up to the cutoff. 
But conditional delegation is strictly better than unconditional delegation. Why? Because this cutoff is chosen optimally by the principle. It, it is chosen uh, to be the point when precisely the private information of the agent is no longer valuable relative to the cost of the delay, the cost of the bias. And as a consequence, centralization is better than delegation. So you never want to delegate uh, decisions uh, with, the, with the procrastination bias, so decisions like uh, planned shutdowns. Now uh, let's move to the uh, early exercise bias case. And again, uh, let's go back to the stationary case, so at a low bar is zero. So the equilibrium with truthful revelation of information in this case does not exist for a simple reason. And the reason is, uh, is basically the crawford sobels reason. So if the agent follows the truthful recommendation, recommends you to drill when the oil price hits his most preferred threshold, the principal enforces data and says, no, I'm not going to drill. I know that it's too early. I will wait until my uh, most preferred threshold. Of course, the agent is strategic, so he will mimic a higher type, and the truthful communication here breaks down. So basically, the reason why it breaks down is in the crawford sobels chip talk uh, seminal paper. So this, this argument does not work for the procrastination case. Uh, because there, the principal is tempted to go back in time, but this is not possible. So time really plays the, the role of this one-sided commitment device. So in this case, uh, we show that all equilibria have a partition structure of the following form. So there is a multiple omega, and uh, you sort of divide the, the interval uh, with this multiple. There are infinitely many partitions. So all types between omega and 1 uh, they, recommend you, they recommend to drill when the, uh, uh, when the uh, xt hits some cut of x bar. Uh, as a principle, when you get to see this recommendation, uh, you act on it, you drill immediately. If uh, the recommendation is to postpone, you learn that the type is between uh, 0 and omega, uh, and uh, everybody waits until the uh, oil price hits the, the next threshold, x bar over omega, and then the game repeats. Uh, so let me talk about what determines uh, omega here. So we have incentive compatibility conditions of the agent and the principal. So for the agent, uh, this is simple. So if you are O type omega, you have to be exactly indifferent between exercising that x bar, and this is the left hand side, and exercising that x bar over omega. This is the right hand side. If you are the principal, you have two incentive compatibility conditions. On one hand, when you get a recommendation to drill, you must be willing to exercise immediately. So x bar cannot be too low. On the other hand, you have the ex-ante incentive compatibility condition. Uh, when you get the recommendation not to drill, uh, you, must, you must wait. Otherwise, it's not informative. So the outcome is that you have a continuum of, of equilibria. So for any omega within a certain range, cannot be too low, cannot be too high, uh, you can construct an equilibrium uh, of this form. So the equilibrium with omega star, the highest omega, is some sort of the best. You have uh, the most informative communication there, and you have unbiased decision making. So conditional on the limited uh, uh, information that the principal gets, uh, he exercises at the right time. So all other equilibria, they are worse in the sense that there is uh, less communication. These partitions are, uh, are, are bigger. And there is also delay in decision making. So the delay is interesting because here the agent uh, wants to do something early, but still you can have delay in equilibrium. Uh, so here, at least in the in this sort of this best equilibrium, you get noisy communication, but you get correct timing of the decision. So the friction is is quite different uh, from what you get uh, for decisions with the uh, procrastination problem, uh, where it happens uh, at the right, uh, it happens too late, uh, but it is informative. Uh, so there are interesting comparative statics here. The obvious one is that higher bias means uh, less informative decisions. So this is the comparative static for this uh, best omega uh, equilibrium. Uh, so the novel comparative statics are with respect to the parameters of the stochastic process. So things like sigma, uh, mu, and r. And the, uh, the result here is that so any parameter that increases the value of the option to wait uh, uh, reduces informativeness of communication. 
So it means with higher sigma, higher mu, and lower discount rates, uh, there is less uh, informative communication. So I like the result about the discount rates because it's, it's sort of the opposite from what we l know from reputation models where typically low discount rates, they, they make the problem uh, less severe uh, because future is important relative to the present, but here it's, it's the opposite, lower discount rates, they make the problem uh, more severe. Uh, now let's uh, get to, uh, to the delegation. So do you want to delegate decisions uh, when the problem is that the agent wants to do something too early, like product launch and an empire building agent? So the result here is that uh, there are two cutoffs, B1 and B2. Numerically, B1 equals B2. Uh, we could prove only for, for different uh, cutoffs such that if, uh, if the bias is below B1, uh, then you want to delegate. If the bias is above B, B, B2, uh, you don't want to delegate. So, so basically, uh, the implications, combining this with the result for control rights uh, we had before, is that decisions with late exercise bias, they should not be delegated regardless of how big the conflict of interest is. Decisions, uh, <coughs> With the early exercise bias, like product launches, they should be delegated if the agency problem is, uh, is not too severe. Okay, so then we have, uh, we ha we have an extension uh, which is, uh, is not in the paper yet. We worked it out, but we haven't updated the paper yet. So the idea here is as follows. So suppose that uh, you can you can choose the timing of the delegation. So before that, we consider the problem where the principal either delegates at the initial date uh, or never. So this is like the pure allocation of control rights. So now suppose that you can choose when to delegate. So you can basically choose the timing. So this is irrelevant for the problem with, uh, with negative B, when the problem is, is procrastination. Because there, centralization uh, is the best thing. In the paper, we have a more general result that centralization implements the, the optimal contract in this, in, in this problem. But it matters for problems where the, the, the direction of the bias is different, the early exercise bias. So the result that we have here is that if the, if the problem is, uh, is whether the agent wants to do something too early and you can choose the timing of delegation, then delegating at the right time implements the optimal contract. And by the optimal contract, I mean the problem where the, uh, the principal uh, uh, asks the agent what your type is and uh, commits to, to exercise uh, at, the, at, the, at the given threshold for, 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 for different reports. So the revolution principle. Uh, so what's the idea? Uh, so you have to think how the optimal contract looks in this, in this setting. So the optimal contract here uh, trades off uh, information of the agent with the bias of the agent. So the way the optimal contract looks like is that you, uh, you want to, uh, to separate uh, low types, so types uh, who, uh, 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 with low theta who don't want to, uh, to, uh, to exercise too early, but you want to pull types with, 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 with very high theta. Because very high types, they, they want to exercise really, really early. And for you, it's not worth it to, to giving them, uh, uh, to giving them uh, rents to extract this, this, this information because you know that exercising the early is, is not optimal. So if you delegate at the right time, you implement exactly this. Because not delegating too early means that you pull very high types. So very high types, they uh, exercise immediately when you delegate them. In addition, because you delegate, you use efficiently information of low types. Because once you delegate and the types are low, they, uh, uh, they decide to, uh, to exercise at some point in the future, efficiently using their information. So the message uh, here is that uh, for decisions that are stopping times, it is the direction of the conflict of interest uh, that is a key driver for, uh, for how you should allocate control rights. So principal uh, should have control rights for decision where the problem is, uh, is that the agent wants to do something too early. 
uh, but principle should delegate decisions uh, where the agent, uh, where the problem is that the agent does, wants to do something to uh, so in, remember, in the static models, uh, the message is pretty different because there, uh, there, there uh, the uh, allocation of control rights is driven by the degree of the conflict of interest and the degree of the value of information. Whereas here, it's driven by the direction of the conflict of interest, not the degree. And, and uh, uh, so we think this is an important message of the paper. Okay, so let me conclude. So we look at the problem of uh, communication and control rights allocation for the decisions that concern the time of doing something. I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's relevant. It happens uh, in, in, many, in many cases. And the main takeaway is that timing decisions are different from static decisions uh, because time has this uh, built-in uh, asymmetry that, uh, uh, that you cannot, go, that you cannot uh, go back in time. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's relevant, particularly when the problem is when the agent wants to do something too late. Yeah, thank you.